Thank you, Eileen, and good morning, everyone. I think it's still morning. I'm delighted to be here today to tell you just about one of JVS's programs, Woe Mentoring, which offers women in transition something truly unique, the opportunity to focus on personal and career growth, improve and increase their professional networks, receive encouragement, advice, and coaching from an established professional woman. Our mentees include women who have hit the proverbial glass ceiling in their organizations or feel stuck in a dead-end job with no idea how to tackle the obstacles preventing advancement. They include people who want careers, want to change careers after raising a family or those who decide it's time to take a risk and expand a small business or they might be a recent college graduate nervously navigating the first steps of her career or a veteran transitioning back to the civilian workplace. At the culmination ceremony we had last week for our most recent co cohort, we heard from a room full of mentees about how Woe Mentoring had enabled them to succeed in ways they never imagined possible, how the experience had literally changed their lives. And that is only possible because of the incredible mentors. These women, our mentors, have established careers and experience and agree to meet once a month with their mentee to offer expertise, kindness, support, and encouragement. Empowering women is why we're all here today, and there is no limit to what we can accomplish when we work together. I'd like to ask all of the program participants, current or former, both mentors and mentees to stand. There are a lot of you in the room, so please stand up. I couldn't be more proud of the women you are and the women you are becoming. And I want all of us to give you one more round of applause. So it's now my privilege to introduce you to Jenny Campbell. She recently completed the Woe Mentoring program as a mentee, and she's going to share a little bit about her personal journey with you. Thank you. Good morning, ladies, and the handful of gentlemen way in the back somewhere. Uh, so I have a speech prepared. I'm really horrible about going off on tangents, so bear with me. <laughs> um, so just a little bit about myself. Um, before I knew how to organize letters into words, I was overwhelmed with a desire to write. I remember at age five, I sat with a pencil in my hand and asked my mother if she would help me write a love letter to a fellow kindergartner in my class. Little did I know that my first interaction with the written word would set a precedent for my relationship with writing. Growing up in Southgate, California, raised predominantly and lovingly, by a grandmother with an elementary school ele um, education and young parents with limited resources, I grew up straddling the desire to express myself artistically and the need to be practical, to be a good daughter. Unable to afford to attend the colleges I was admitted to, I worked various jobs to help support myself and in turn, support my family as well. As a young adult, I moved out on my own and later lived with a partner who I am still with today. For years, I worked diligently to maintain my independence, but in, my, in turn, my dreams and desires lay dormant on a back burner that flamed too strongly for me to ignore. So after years of working at my current day job and with the encouragement of my partner, I finally felt like I was at a place where I had to make something happen for myself something for me, something selfish. By some serendipitous turn of events, I was fortunate enough to come across JVS's Woe Mentoring Program. After years of no's and maybe laters, I was finally overwhelmed with someone saying yes and a feeling of validation. Yes, Jenny, what you want does matter. We believe in you, and if you try, and if you work hard enough, you can make it work. 
My mentor was an unbelievably unexpected blessing who has helped me to bridge the gap between toiling away writing unseen works during my work breaks and perhaps actually sharing my stories with the masses. I feel so much more empowered now and have accomplished things I didn't realize were that I was capable of before I began this journey. When I began the program, I was working up to 10 hour days, Monday through Friday, at my primary job, and fruitlessly prospecting for insurance leads during my free time. And I barely had any energy or clarity to write at the end of the day. It was a hard decision for me, but I eventually had to let my second job as an insurance representative lapse in order to focus on my writing. And through my mentor's encouraging and grounding words, I was able to find the fortitude to slowly but surely write small pieces that helped to rekindle the love that I once had for this craft. I was able to find the fortitude to actually begin and complete an epic and daunting miniseries manuscript. I had never completed a script before this. And now I have the first draft of a full-fledged three-part miniseries completed and ready for review. <laughs> I know I'm a confident and tenacious person, but I had no idea what I was truly capable of until I actually wrote 60 pages in one night. I'm really diligent and crazy like that sometimes. <laughs> But what I'm trying to say is, one never knows what trajectory a person has been through or the struggles they're battling to be their most authentic selves. Sometimes all we need is a soft push in the right direction to help someone change their world, to change the world. I can only imagine what a dynamic shape our world would be molded into if we were to enable other determined women like myself to be their best selves and bestow that goodness upon others. You see, at its most basic and minimal level, the Woe Mentoring Program is a gentle nudge to help a person think about themselves differently. At its best, the program is a catalyst to help a person achieve their true potential and perhaps even to help bring positive revelations in others. I will be forever grateful to both my mentor and the Woe Mentoring Program. Because of them, I have been changed for good. Thank you. The WLN, the, Jew the JVS Women's Leadership Network, is a donor support group established initially to support the WOE Mentoring Program which definitely remains close to our hearts. Earlier this year, our board got together and talked about how we could help more women in need, more women in transition and crisis. We decided to change our mission, to expand it actually, to become the Women's Leadership Network, the WLN. This is our time, we think, for us to be greater than we thought we could be as a WLN, it's our time to help more women. The more we raise, the more we volunteer our hours, the more women we can help. Who are the women that we want to help? She might be somebody that's struggling with long-term unemployment or a disability. She may be someone that's transitioning from welfare to work. She may realize that she needs to make more money to support her family, her parents, herself. She may be someone who's a veteran, who's transitioning from the armed forces. Marie Maldrew Buchanan is here to share her story about the impact that the JVS Veteran First Program has had in her life. Please welcome and thank U.S. Air Force retired Marie Mildrew Buchanan.
Thank you, Eileen. Before I begin, I want to introduce uh, three of my fellow participants in the JVS Veterans First Program and ask them to stand. Fernanda Miranda, in the back, U.S. Army Combat Veteran. <laughs> Alexandra Pinelli, who served in the U.S. Navy as an Aviation Electrical Quality Assurance Inspector. <laughs> Petty Officer, 11 years. Nazinga Smith, who served in the U.S. Air Force during Operation Desert Shield. <laughs> Senior Airman, Minuteman Mission. I will never forget the night I flew into San Antonio, Texas to report for basic training. I was waiting with what felt like a thousand other recruits when all of a sudden, a huge ruckus started about 100 feet from where I was standing. I looked up and saw six military training instructors wearing Smokey the Bear hats walking towards my group, ordering all of us to pick up our bags and fall in. We scrambled to grab our belongings and stood in formation. The training instructor shouted in unison the most incomprehensible command I have ever heard, followed by the word, march. And we headed to the airport, out of the terminal, and into the waiting bus. My name is Marie Muldrew Buchanan. I entered the United States Air Force on October 1st of 1981 and served 23 years. 12 years, thank you, active duty and 11 years reserve, and I would do it again in a moment. My duty stations were located in the United States, Europe, and Asia. My job specialties were musician and administrative specialist. As with many female veterans, dealing with unemployment, homelessness, and financial crises are experiences I had that could have been avoided or lessened if the support services and resources had been available when I needed them most. The fact is that women take care of everything. We take care of the home, dependents, friends, coworkers, and bosses. If you are a military reservist, you perform all of the above in addition to your civilian job responsibilities. If you are active duty and returning from an overseas deployment, regardless of your physical or mental state, you are still expected to pick up where you left off. Women in the military have jobs ranging from combat support and civil engineering to food service and maintenance, and we all receive training in operations security and firearms. And yet, despite military training, college degrees, and extensive work experience, high-earning female veterans are rare and many are employed in minimum or low-wage jobs. Between 1992 and 2004, I was an Air Force reservist with dependent children to support. In order to afford housing, childcare costs, and food, I worked an average of two jobs. Sometimes I had three, and in 1997, I had four. After rushing home from work one evening, I remember asking my children what I should wear because I forgot which job I was going to heading to. <laughs> Between 2008 and 2010, I ex experienced unemployment and homelessness. After being laid off from my job in 2008, my family and I were evicted from our home of 14 years. The majority of our belongings were given away or left in the apartment, and we spent several weeks living with family members and friends. Starting over and rebuilding our lives was extremely difficult because there is nowhere to turn for financial assistance or shelters that would accept families. Four months ago, I was once again laid off from my job. The difference between past experience and now is that I found the JVS Veterans First program. JVS understands that women veterans have challenges and experiences that differ radically from male veterans. Veterans First offers a full range of services that have helped in my job search, from resume building to interview skills and networking. But I have also benefited from the camaraderie with other veterans and the non-traditional programs they offer that promote health and wellness. I have participated in workshops on mindfulness and in an incredible ocean therapy day where a group of women veterans learned to surf together, building confidence and self-esteem. 
It is extremely easy to slip into depression when adversity is the dominant factor in your life. Having a reason to get out of bed, to begin job searching, searching, discussing your past, and planning an uncertain future depends on the strength of your community. JVS is a community. The team at Veterans First refused to allow me to stop working towards my goals and encouraged me to purchase new ideas for my future. They listened to my needs and experiences with interest and understanding. JVS promoted tangible solutions for my job search, as well as my emotional and physical well-being. Solutions that have resulted in job interviews and helped, make me inform, uh, helped me make informed career and educational choices. It has been 33 years since that day at the San Antonio airport when I began basic training. I have had a multitude of experiences since then, both advantageous and adverse experiences which have prepared me to be an effective advocate for services tailored to the needs of women veterans. I sing the body electric. I celebrate the me yet to come. I toast to my own reunion when I become one with the sun. At the age of 59, these lyrics from fame define my heart and mind and they encouraged me to believe that whether we are military veterans or civilians, there is unity and understanding among women. Thank you for your supporting this wonderful organization and for this opportunity to tell you my story. <laughs>